Hi, everyone. Welcome to day seven of Napo Raimo, 30 poems in 30 days. If you are following along day by day in real time, April 2021, uh, congratulations on making it through your first week of writing poems every day. And if you're not following along exactly, or if you're watching this at any point in the future, just hey, hi. Uh, we're gonna share a poem and do some writing. Today, I would like to share a poem that has been with me for a very long time, um, For Strong Women by Marge Piercy. And let's just get into it. I actually could not find the poem published online. So this is taken straight from my book that I have a physical copy of, The Moon is Always Female by Marge Piercy. Um, <laughs> it's published, uh, it's a very old book. It's got that nice yellowy situation going on. Um, 1977, I believe, might have been the first date. So anyway, this is For Strong Women by Marge Piercy. A strong woman is a woman who is straining. A strong woman is a woman standing on tiptoe and lifting a barbell while trying to sing Boris Godunov. A strong woman is a woman at work, cleaning out the cesspool of the ages. And while she shovels, she talks about how she doesn't mind crying. It opens the ducts of the eyes and throwing up develops the stomach muscles and she goes on shoveling with tears in her nose. A strong woman is a woman in whose head a voice is repeating, I told you so, ugly, bad girl, bitch, nag, shrill, witch, ball buster, nobody will ever love you back. Why aren't you feminine? Why aren't you soft? Why aren't you quiet? Why aren't you dead? A strong woman is a woman determined to do something others are determined not be done. She is pushing up on the bottom of a lead coffin lid. She is trying to raise a manhole cover with her head. She is trying to butt her way through a steel wall. Her head hurts. People waiting for the hole to be made say, hurry, you're so strong. A strong woman is a woman bleeding inside. A strong woman is a woman making herself strong every morning while her teeth loosen and her back throbs. Every baby a tooth, midwives used to say, and now every battle a scar. A strong woman is a mass of scar tissue that aches when it rains and wounds that bleed when you bump them, and memories that get up in the night and pace in boots to and fro. A strong woman is a woman who craves love like oxygen or she turns blue choking. A strong woman is a woman who loves strongly and weeps strongly and is strongly terrified and has strong needs. A strong woman is strong in words, in action, in connection, in feeling. She is not strong as a stone, but as a wolf suckling her young. Strength is not in her, but she enacts it as the wind fills a sail. What comforts her is others loving her equally for the strength and for the weakness from which it issues, lightning from a cloud. Lightning stuns. In rain, the clouds disperse. Only water of connection remains flowing through us. Strong is what we make each other. Until we are all strong together, a strong woman is a woman strongly afraid. Oh, I will admit that poem lives with me constantly. Okay, I have many things to say at the end of the video, but 
to get us started with the prompt, um, I would love to invite you to have your own reactions to the poem, whether you have read it before or uh, if this is the first time, you get my uh, writing mantra. Sorry, no cuts. Remember, I'm doing this one hot take. Okay, so bear with me. Um, before we get started, I just want to invite you to listen to these words and feel them in your body. I am here and present with my experiences. I am grounded and open. I have unlimited access to the infinite flow of creativity always around me. Whatever happens on these pages is what's meant to happen. I'm not judging myself or my writing. I'm just writing. I have everything I need to begin already inside of me. I'm settling in and I'm ready to write. Okay. So thinking about this poem by Marge Piercy for Strong Women, written or published in this book again in 1977. <sighs> First thing I want to invite you to do is think about how poems can sometimes be a dedication. Um, so in this poem, I read for strong women as a dedication of March Piercy to her reader of strong women. Um, so strong women, thinking about that as like a social group that you can just, you know, create and articulate. I want you to think about taking a moment and make a list of social groups for lack of a better word that I can think of, um, that you admire, that you respect, that you belong to, you don't have to. So it could be a group that you're a part of, like if you're a woman, um, or but it, you could be, say, a man writing for women. That's just one example. Um, but it could be related to a profession, like a job. It could be culturally related or ethnically or, re or regionally related or related to age or gender or a cause that you believe in very strongly. So, you know, whatever it might be, these are just a few things that I thought of nurses, teachers, you know, Appalachian youth, so regional or Japanese Americans, like cultural or ethnic mothers, single dads, it could be anything. Think about groups that you have a personal connection to in any way and just make a quick list and see what comes out and pause the video and then come back when you're ready for the next step. All right, so thinking about your list, there might be many, <laughs> but choose one you feel like responding to today that you'd like to dedicate your poem to. So sometimes when we're writing, we write very autobiogra autobiographically and that's wonderful and fine. Sometimes we feel like we want to write externally to our social world around us. And this can be both. So you might belong to that group. But anyway, think about the people you are considering and make another quick list of notes. I want you to think specifically about challenges this group has faced and triumphs. Um, oh, another one I'm just thinking of is needs. What does this group need? So see, I'm just sort of improvising on the fly <laughs> like I would normally do in a class. But um, think about those things, make any notes, of course, if there's any verbs, uh, you know, nouns, images, concrete language, any of that, let it all fall out into the page. You're basically just asking your, yourself to do a brain dump um, to get some ideas and then come back. Okay, this part, if you feel like doing it, um, I would say you could skip it if you don't have a lot of time because you can use what you just did in the first step. But if you want to spend a few minutes, think about free writing uh, your relationship to this group. So connect to your heart and your experiences. Why is this group of people or type of person important to you? What really moves you in your soul, your spirit, your emotions? You know, what have you learned in your life experiences? And what would you want to pass on to a reader to, you know, whatever it might be, to uplift, to inspire, to acknowledge um, this group of people, anything that comes to mind? 
So do that if you'd like for a few minutes and then come right on back. Okay, so putting it all together. <sighs> this is a dedication poem prompt that I'm asking you to write. Again, respond to anything <laughs> in any way that you want, but I, I am offering that you can dedicate your poem to this group and use that in the title as a focal point for your writing and use this space in your poem to bring in multiple facets of challenges, triumphs, needs, whatever it might be, history, questions, your experiences, memories, details. I mean, it's all up for grabs in the world of writing, but use, use as much in your personal vocabulary and vernacular to bring your dedication poem to life. And imagine a reader doesn't know anything really about this group and maybe you want to, um, you know, illuminate or maybe your audience is somebody in this group and you want to connect with them and relate with them. So whichever direction you go, think about them as your audience. You're actually writing your poem to this group as your audience, um, as an option. And if you want to keep the focal point and to model the poem off of March Piercy's, you might want to consider a refrain to keep bringing the focus back to this group and explaining, for example, a strong woman is, a strong woman is, and fill in that blank with whichever one you're talking about uh, with all the details that you have brainstormed or that might come to you in the writing process. So there's your prompt. It's, there's so many groups and people that, we have in our hearts and minds and souls to care about and think about right now. Um, so just whatever is working for you in this moment, you can always do this again later for another, another group of people, but honoring and dedicating to people um, in your world. So have fun and then uh, come back if you wanna talk about March Piercy. Okay. Well, I hope that was fruitful for you. Uh, if you want to stick around, I have so many reactions to this poem. So like I said in the beginning, this is one of those poems. I don't honestly even remember like where I got this book, how I picked it up, but I have, you know, poured through it and I immediately have was attracted to that poem so much so I have I know I've shared it in previous workshops I've done I know that I've talked about it a lot it's because it's one of those poems that strikes me on such a deep level it feels like that poem was written for me but I know it's for many people so I consider myself in Included in this group of strong women. And even before I considered myself a strong woman, you know, as a little girl, I think I probably came across this poem as a young girl. It gave me a torch to aspire to and to feel understood and connected. There are lines in this poem that that have struck me so deeply, like a strong woman is a, you know, we are all strong together, but Oh gosh, I can't, I haven't memorized it, but like a strong woman is a woman weeping and crying and, and loving strongly. That to me, when I first read it, shook me open because it shook open this idea of what strength is. Strength being like physical strength or bravado or machismo or whatever, masculine strength. And it showed me there are so many different types of strength. There's emotional strength and social bonding strength and intellectual strength and empathy strength. And, you know, I think that's such an important thing for us all to remember, especially when it comes to valuing, well, say women and also many different types of folks, but valuing the internal experience um, of people and seeing strength in a way outside of the patriarchal norm, I guess you could say. So, I mean, Marge Piercy is clearly 
working outside the patriarchal norm. <laughs> she has been one of my strongest influences as a feminist and she very much, oof, very much writes for her reader. I'll share a little bit, a bit about that in a second, but Marge Piercy is still with us. She's 85 years old by last count, uh, born in 1936. Marge Piercy, if you ever get a chance for whatever reason to see this video, just know that I love you and you're one of my heroes, my sheroes. Anyway, back to uh, a quick little bio, you know, so she has published around 20 books of poetry and 20 novels. So that's a lot. She is a prolific writer. Here's something I learned about her. She um, has written some speculative fiction that I have not read and didn't realize. And she has, cr has been credited with the first work of cyberpunk. Oh my gosh, that stuns me so much because I'm all about the hope punk right now. And there's so many different types of literary punk, which I'm super about. <laughs> <laughs> so Piercy was writing about social and environmental issues and feminism. She was born in the, you know, depression era, grew up poor. Uh, I found this interesting in her bio that she had some fellowships which allowed her the freedom to write, as we all know. Uh, so that was inspiring. You know, if you are out there thinking about getting some grants and fellowships, you need writing time just do it. Apply for it. Apply, apply, apply. Um, you know, I've gotten a few. I have one in the, uh, out in the ether right now. It's really, anyway. Okay. <laughs> Getting back to Piercy. She, um, you know, she had a few different marriages. And what I find interesting is that, you know, her first and second marriages didn't work out. And what I'm reading is the first one, because, Piercy did not fit into this idea of her conventional sex role, you know, without further elucidating, I'm sure we can understand what that means as a woman <laughs> in the, you know, 1960s, 70s. Um, and her second marriage, I'm not really sure, but I do know that it seems like maybe she was extremely prolific and he was having some issues with him, his own self. But um, it just makes me think about how women, when they are highly intelligent and activist and progressive and prolific, uh, you know, this whole career versus family dichotomy in a woman's psyche. By the way, I just finished reading this book, Goddesses and Every Woman. Check it out if you want to hear some Got, learn about some goddess archetype. Probably going to do a workshop on that at some point. FYI, a little teaser. But anyway, there are these different competing impulses in a woman's psyche, you know, for children and family, but also for someone like Piercy, who is naturally brilliant and needs to write. And I relate to that. I feel that like I have to write. Um, it can cause a tension in relationships. So, you know, March Piercy put her work um, put her work first. And I really relate to that because one of the things she has said is that and she has a poem in a book called To Be of Use. She actually writes for other people. She says, says this in her, um, on her website in her biography. Uh, she says this, I imagine I speak for a constituency, living and dead, and that I give utterance to energy, experience, insight, words flowing from many lives. I have always desired that my poems work for others. Mm. I just love that and I relate to it so much. I know, I knew there was a reason that Piercy has been one of my most influential poets. Um, there's a few other poems that have influenced me greatly. One of them is called For the Young Who Want To with a line that resonates in my head almost constantly. You have to like it more than being loved in the sense that to be a, an artist, a writer, or anyone with some vocation or cause, you have to 
like it more than your need for approval. You have to believe in it more than your need for validation or approval. Um, I think, uh, especially for a lot of women, I can speak for myself, that is something I think about a lot. You know, women are meant supposed to be agreeable and pleasant and beautiful and friendly and thinking a lot about, you know, rage and anger and honesty and fighting and the warrior side of things when it comes to human rights and justice and all of that. Um, so I think that it's really inspiring that Piercy actually sees herself as, um, or sees her poems as being in service to the world. And that's something I very much aspire to, uh, to be of use. You know, I feel like it's, the greatest purpose of my life as well as um <sighs> just the thing that I need to do and so Piercy also says and this is so humbling and grounding the work of the world is common as mud this is that's a line from the poem to be of use she's got so many of those great little one-liners that just stick with you um the work of the world is common as mud. So whatever your work is in this world, we do it and we do it every day and it's our routine. And, you know, speaking of routine, uh, Piercy lives in Cape Cod now and she writes in her bio, you know, she finds it important to like the routine of daily life in order to survive as a political writer in the long haul. Yes. Yes. Again, the work of the world is common as mud. And what is that saying? Um, you know, before enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. We're just out here chopping some wood and carrying water, whatever our work is. And, you know, I think that's an important lesson we can take from Piercy in the long haul. Like if you're going to be a political writer, you are going to be fighting against the status quo because there's obviously so much we need to change and awaken and connect about. Um, and this is the final cherry on the top of this Piercy Sunday. Ah, uh, she says she has always celebrated whatever she could find to celebrate. And if any of y'all have been with me for any amount of time, you know that I'm all about celebrating what there is to celebrate. And so thank you, Marge Piercy. I did not realize we had that in common so much, but I should have guessed it because of your work and your writing. Anyway, I'm speaking as if she's listening to me. <laughs> Um, she has a poem, she has a line in the poem I shared for strong women that I think is directly influencing my current manuscript, which is called I'd Rather Be Lightning. And, you know, this idea of lightning, stunning, like power coming from weakness, lightning coming from a cloud, needing both of those things, that frenetic high energy electricity, and also the softness, the vapor, the, the ethereal so ah, I love, 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 love it. I love it. Um, I'll stop there. So uh, please check out some more March Piercy if you would like. And um, you, you know, keep doing the work every day, common as mud. Okay, I'll be doing the work with you again tomorrow. See you then. <laughs>